in the top of tea. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome along to Hartwood Turning in the stable studio. Hope you are all well today. Um, I've got some reprobates to help me today. I'll just put that tea down and I'll go over here and I will bring them on screen. God help me today. Uh, I'm turning a goblet today, so God help me. We have Mr. Mike Walt. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. <laughs> the, the Goblet Meister. We have Terry from TJ Tony. Hello, campers. <laughs> campers. campers. Jesus. <laughs> Hello, campers. Hi, <Heidi>, hi. <laughs> we have Pete from Twisted Trees. Morning, all. And we have, uh, yeah, a gentleman wood turner, Mr. Mark Beckett. Hi, everybody. Does that so happy about it, then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, quite happy, I'm quite happy to have you here, but the problem is I haven't got a mute button. But see, I can't just, <laughs> I just can't shut you up when I need to. <laughs> only joking, Mark, only joking. No, right, get not. back in the background. You just can talk amongst yourself and uh, give me any advice that you feel that you think uh, I need. Um, oh. Turn a couplet. <laughs> turn a couplet. <laughs> <laughs> That's why Mike's here, keep me right. <laughs> well, right, don't, get turn it don't, 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 don't start turning it for goodness sake alright guys let's have a look at the piece of wood what have we got we have got a piece of American cherry which is uh, 9 inches long and I think it's 3 inches across let me just check that that's 3 inches 3 hey, inches can you see shavings on that floor where? Where, where can you see oh you can't two shavings yeah, it's just there yeah, yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't cleaned up properly today. Oh, started already. <coughs> Next Matt, time he has a go at you, Mark, just keep a seal of that. So uh -huh. I've just finished. I've just finished my practice piece, which was a. Um, I turned a dibber this morning using my skew, which I won't be using today. And that lacy locked in there. What are you doing now? Shall I read out quickly who's in? You can do that, mate. There can't be that many in yet. Yeah, you've got a few. Right, we've got Tommy's Workshop, Clint of Wood Dancers, Chris Dodds, Terry Bartlett, Kaiti Shed, uh, Lawrence Brigadier, Paul Hewton, Graysby Turner, Todd of Glen Cove Woodworks, John Knight, uh, Joe Senior, good afternoon, Joe, Robert Dolman, Four King Owls, And Robert Dubwood, Bob CP, Hi, Rob. Chase Wood turning, and I think that's just about everybody so far. Welcome along. Hi. Hello, everybody. Hello. Good afternoon, one and all. I just with my little uh, three quarter inch or one inch, I think it is, I don't know if it is, one inch. Record power. Covering it up, look, because you didn't Spindle know roughing gauge. Up. And I've just got my heel in my hand on it, keeping it on the tool rest. And I'm using the hump my hand just to deflect the shavings, basically. Or the chips when it was chips. Someone's been watching Colwyn Way. I'm Steve Jones. Robert Robertson. And uh, AJ Heath have both joined. Uh, and anybody else who turns, really. <laughs> Everybody does that. So it's not that big a deal. Nice pink coming in this. A little flat spot Todd just there. Todd at Glen Cove Woodworks wants to know are you going to use Mike's taping technique? <laughs> and Nobody uses Mike's possibly. taping technique. I'm not sure. Just, just say I'll rely on anybody else for anything I miss because I can't really read the comments, so uh, I haven't got YouTube running. <clears throat> we'll filter them, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Is that because you're one-eyed Walt at the moment? Yes, I am. <laughs> one-eyed Walt. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm Walt the pirate. <laughs> <laughs> one-eyed Walt to vote. Applets ahoy! <laughs> I'm surprised someone hasn't <laughs> sent me a picture of a parrot for me to stick on my shoulder, to be honest with you. 
<laughs> Rob CP's in, so he's probably drawing oh. as we speak. He's drawing it oh. as we speak, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Could you draw a proper portrait of me, please, that shows me in my in my beautiful light? With eye patch and parrot. Yeah. Glenn, the Yorkshire clip is in. Hello, Glenn. Hello, Glenn. Hello, Glenn. <laughs> he's Hi, Glenn. watching while he's working. I hit the tail desk. Have you finished that bowl yet, Glenn? <laughs> yeah, yesterday he finished it. All right. Right, so now we have to work out what size we're going to make the cup, make the stem, make the base. Uh, Trevor so reads in. Bit. Hi, Trevor. Trevor. And then the base, I'll leave myself a bit to part off from there. That's about right, that's close. No, maybe not, maybe that's too big. You go to there. Ah, oh, dear, spindle gauge. Hey, Robo. Well, well. <laughs> you got a space for a chuck there. Hi, Robo. Well. Oh. That's what I need to do. I need to make a little tanner. Handy. Use my skew. Jennifer's in. Jennifer's crafting. That's what I did this before. Bailey's is here. Hiya, Bailey's. Afternoon, Bailey's. Bailey's is Jennifer. Of course, Bailey's call. is Jennifer. Oh, yeah, I'm calling her from now on. All right, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Bailey's queen. Yes, I know why. Yes. Would you like another Bailey's? Yes, another bottle would be fine. Would you like, would you like one Bailey's. more Bailey's? I'm not so sure one more was ever the case. <laughs> I've just... <laughs> you, know, she, you know she's going to kill us next time she sees us. She yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> I think if that's the right size, we'll be okay. Yeah, it should be all right. That'll be close enough. Right, let's get this into a chuck. So we'll remove this using the big pushy rod. Tommy, Brian, what's in the bag under your shape, under your uh, plate there? Shavings. Oh, Four I goblets. Show <laughs> Welcome, Steve. Steve it's asked the learner to learn It's the remains the of the goblet I tried to turn Steve. yesterday. <laughs> hey, Steve. <laughs> I lied. I, I've got YouTube running as well. Oh, you have now, have you? Yeah. Bluffing, eh? Let's pop that in there. Oh, it doesn't fit. Yes, it does. Oh, you have a little faith. Chris Dodd says, tell Mikey has to say pieces of 10, because that's the metric <laughs> version. <laughs> that's a metric version. <laughs> ah, pieces of 10. Oh, ah. Tim's, Tim's in. Shouldn't have, have, shouldn't, shouldn't have quite tamed up. Yeah, should have. And Charlie Taylor's just joined. Hi, Charlie. Charlie Taylor. Let's push that in with the tail stop Peter first. Peter here. Peter. Yes, Peter, that is Mike. That's it. Mike One Eyed Walt is with us today. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hello, Some abuse Walt. today, Mike. Well, I you can can't actually it. see him on the screen, so you have to imagine him with a patch on his eye. Yeah. Cool. Only trouble and is, the, he's got two of them, one on each eye. Yeah, and the parrot's and just parrot. died. <laughs> just died, actually. And the just, finished turning over, his, yeah. just finished turning his peg leg. <laughs> so, better reduce this a little bit and joining. make a little. Why did that do that? Wouldn't it be nice this year? Hugh. Uh, Hugh. Would be nice. That's Hugh. Hello, you. Show my butt. That's you, yep. Yeah. Uh, Welcome along, Hugh. I got a little bit of a wobble on the. Doug Miller's here, I Doug. I wasn't expecting that to wobble at all. Let's try that again. Sometimes we do, just need a little bit of truing up. Yeah, just give it a tap. Sure, it's not you wobbling. Yeah, it's just uh, just about eight hundred revs. It's kind of it's wobbling a bit. What well, is wobbling? I kind of wasn't expecting that. Everything's locked. Tail stock lined up with the head stock. Yep, I did that this morning to double check that. <clears throat> Let me just give this a quick. Yeah, just give it. Just give it across here. Need to turn the speed up, though. Yeah, folks, if you've got a question for either Brian or Pete or Terry, myself or Mike, just put it in the chat. We'll read it out for you. 
Hello to Ben German. Might even answer it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right, Ben. They might, they they might answer it. You never know. You can never tell with these guys. You may so even get a sensible answer, but that's pretty unlikely, really. That's, uh, I would say that's seriously unlikely. Hmm. I'm just going to remove a bit of timber using this. You get some kind of shape. Uh, I'm reminded Wouldn't it be always nice that, asking, uh, hope that went, went well, Mike. Sorry, say again, Pete. Wouldn't it be nice to say, hope the opera went well? Oh, cheers, you. Yeah, it did. I'll just wait for the, hopefully the second one goes as well in a few weeks' time. <laughs> you had a seat of printing tape on, probably, Mark. <laughs> it asked something else first, but it, there, were, then, there weren't enough fouls, so I couldn't read it. <laughs> All right, so that's a that's a rough kind of shape that'll do. There's definitely something going on with this later today. It's bounced all over the place, isn't it? That? Uh, bad, oh, no. workman, bad workman syndrome. I think you're talking about Ben Jam in there. Yeah, the sandwich, the sandwich yeah, man. Yeah, bad workman. <laughs> hey, Rex, Rex B's joint. Oh, Rex. Hi Rex, good afternoon. I can't have some of That's really weird, isn't it, Brian? <clears throat> right, stop the later sec, Brian. I'm confused with that. I thought completely confused undo with the, that. Undo the tail stock. Robert Dub, I'm gonna I'm not gonna repeat stock, that question. Undo the chuck. Just under yeah. the jaws on the chuck. No, I got as far as take the chuck off and put it back on again. Yeah, tenon's not too long, is it? Tenon might be long. Out on the no. tenon. No. I don't no. think it is. I was going to say, just give the piece a twist in the I've jaws. Got a little dovetail. I've got a little dovetail on the tenon. Is the shoulder square, Brian? Oh, I've just chopped my finger. Shit! Don't do that. Lot well, swear on YouTube. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it feels like it's all right. right. Yeah. Put the piece back in. Just press what uh, Terry suggested then. Don't put the piece in. Mm -hmm. Don't. 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 Put don't the, take, up. You know, don't the, take put the piece in. Take, don't put the piece in. What don't supposed to be in there? The piece in. No, the, Turn the lathe on. Just want to see if the chuck is seated properly. Right, is that spinning true? Okay. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> right, so just work your way forward now. You know the chuck is right. Now put the piece in, tighten it up. Have you changed the jaws, Brian? No, not recently, mate. That oh. jaw's loose. That was the problem. Oh, there you go. We have through. a loose jaw, <laughs> yep. There you go. have a loose jaw, just right there. I'm really glad this has happened, Brian, because it gives me another excuse for anything that's got wrong with me. <laughs> um, God, yeah, that was loose, wasn't it? Good grief. Say what, Pete? You use that, Mr. Chucks. So you shouldn't be screwing your jaws on and off. Well, this is true. Yeah. Oh, well, if you've got the, if you've got the, uh, the sliders, then... Uh... So just make sure they're all tight. You're actually getting a bit of bit of a turn with all of them. Well, that's that tight now, so. <clears throat> well, we'll be really off centre now. Oh, that's back, yeah. <laughs> so we'll put the centre back in the top here. Yeah. Rex B has asked a question. He'll stock end. I just bought an SN2 chuck and it's his rusted. What is the best way to clean it and restore Sorry. it? Thank you. Um, I'm not sure what an SN2 chuck is. <coughs> what make is it? Supernova, perhaps? SN2 Supernova, yeah. Supernova, yeah. Be. <coughs> yeah. How far out that is now. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, what I do when I get a, a monkey chuck, I haven't had one in a long time, but when I used to buy secondhand stuff, um, oh, thicker. Supernova. 
Yeah, supernova. They, they, I don't think they're plated. If you um, get a wire brush, WD-40, and just scrub away at it, get it clean. I have actually stripped them down and um, re-greased the inside and put them all back together before, which is worth doing on an old one. Um, <laughs> but if it's all moving freely, then it's probably not worth the trouble unless you're ready to do it. And, yeah, just generally clean it up with some wire brush with rubber grease and WD-40. Yeah. Make sure you to get it completely it clean. Uh, yeah, but you want to get in between stuff and right. face plates and things like that. You want to clean, isn't it? Mm. But, um... It's not cleaned up. If you dip it in duck oil or spray it with duck oil, mm. you can get... It uh, preserves it for at least a year. Yeah. Hi, Wivey. Hi, Wivey. Hi, Wivey. Ben Jabber said he sold one of his three kidneys to buy carriers for all his jaws. <laughs> his three kidneys. <laughs> yeah, they're not, they're not cheap, brother, for what they are. No. No. Nah. So, yeah, I've, I've got carriers for most of my jaws. I've got one set that I haven't got. Hmm. I'll bring that down to there. What have you, have you got? Um, accidents, of jaws. Accidents, don't you? Pete? That's it. Yeah, I'm accidents. Yeah, stuff, send yeah. me your address. I've got, I've got a spare set here, mate. I'll send them up to you. Oh, cool. Thanks, mate. Do you want the long one ones first, or the standard like. ones? <laughs> Um, well, I've got both chucks, and I use both sets of jewels on both chucks, so I don't care. Yeah. I'll see what I've got. I know I've got a couple of spare, so I'll send send a set up to you. Thank you. With the grub screws as well. Wow. Just, yeah. Even better. I'll charge. I'll charge you for the grub screws, but I won't charge you yeah. for the carrier. Yeah, one hundred and twenty-five quid for the grub screws, but you can have the carrier for free. I was going to say twenty-five quid. Sixty pound postage. Quid. <laughs> yeah. 60 pound postage. And call, call it an even ton. Just put it in me PayPal, Pete, and I'll send it off to you, man. <laughs> I'll do that, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure this is bang in the middle because I'm just going to drill it out with this uh, spin log edge. Pinch camera, mm -hmm. So we'll go to there. Let's see. I've actually had a few people what? questioning me on that one. Can you just sort of talk, talk us through it as you do it, Brian? Uh, well, just uh, basically when you're cutting it, you're cutting with the left-hand wing. So if you keep your, your tool exactly level, and it's, you have to make sure it's in the middle, and you just draw straight forward. So the, um, my hand's right on the end of the, the tool. You can't really see it there. And all I'm doing is I'm pushing straight forward towards the headstock. And if I pull that out, it's just this wing that's actually doing the cutting. And you go in as far as you like, as long as you keep it straight. If you get it squint, you'll feel it. When you get to the ferrule on the tool, you know oh, you've gone too far. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if, if it starts clanking on the chuck, you know you went too far, yeah? Yeah, yeah since I put that 15-second uh, video out of doing that, just that... <laughs> There are quite a few people on Facebook saying, how do you do it? I can't get it to work. Patrick yeah, Hanley has joined. Hi, Patrick. Hi, Patrick. Welcome. So it's, it's not a mystery, guys. You just keep make sure you empty your flute. And remember that it will get hot in there. Particularly I'll if your wood's are a little bit damp. damp. <laughs> now, let me see how far in that is now. I'll, try, I'll yeah. translate that for all the viewers, what you just said there, Brian. Make, yeah, sure thanks, you clear, yeah. thanks, make sure you clear the flute out. That's what I said. Well, yeah, it's understandable. So now we just we use the same tool. We do a little bit of bike hollowing. Oh, Sorry. it's so funny you had a ring tool. Oh, sorry? I said, if only you had a small ring tool. If only I had a small ring tool. I yeah, right. Know. Just Do you think I'm going to use my small ring tool on this this today? Yeah. <laughs> Chris Childers just joined us. So Chris and Woodburn Paul. Hello, Brian. Woodburn Paul. Two more Hi, lower on your um, tool rest, mate. What you say, mate? Two more lower on the tool rest. Yep. I'd say 1.75 mil, but yeah. Yeah, 1. 1. 1. 5. yeah, you could be right. <laughs> I, mean, I was rounding it up for 1.86, but you know. 
I just noticed on uh, Simon Hope's website now he's got a um, he's got a he's got a ring tool. Something he hasn't had before. Has he? Has he? Yeah, it's um, he call, uh, I forget what he calls it now, but I have got a ring tool. It comes with two size uh, rings and uh, sharpening stone, everything for right, it, you know. Good. Yeah, I've been converting all of these guys to a ring tool. I've never I've used been one in my workshop recently, and I got more playing with one. Never used. Yes, one. I turned very a, nice to use I turned an end grain end grain uh, ball with the ring tool the other day. Yeah, and I wasn't scared at all much. <laughs> so basically, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm not a bit afraid now live on YouTube. <laughs> you, you rub the bevel, I presume. Do you? I, I'm, I'm totally sort of. no idea. You sort of rub the bevel, get the sweet. Sort of. Yeah. And... You, you it's a closed it, hook tool, Mike. Effectively, it's a, a closed okay. hook tool. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when I'm cutting there, I'm cutting just off here, just right there. Right. And I've got the tool kind of at one o'clock, sort of between one and seven, if you like. Pick up the cut. And if you've got it in the right place, the shaving should go right through the ring. If you find the sweet spot, yeah. it works a treat. Yeah, it looks good. It looks very effective. Even, even in Brian's hands. Hello, Pat. <clears throat> As I was telling them when they were here, it's, um, it looks a lot more scary than it is. It actually handles quite sweetly. Yeah. It, it, it's not a bit scary once you get it in your hands and play with it for a minute. Chris Charlton, 1033 is here. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Yeah. Hi, Pat. So I'll maybe just, I'll maybe just talk this, go with this camera just to sh let you see this. If you can see my hand, no, you can't. This one. So, well, we could see it first time. There's a tool at one o'clock. So, if I just start the cut there, just kind of dig the tool in a bit. So, I'm just lifting the handle up slightly, and then I'm going to just move it across to the right, move my right hand to the right towards the center of the lathe, and just pull that across. Put one bolts in, hi, right, Paul. And you notice the finish on the ring too is um, really, really nice. The finish on it's almost like a skew finish. Yeah. Because basically that's what it is. I just need to move this tool rest forward a little bit. That's very really impressive. Finish. Very impressive. Close up, Roy. You want to close up again? Yeah. You can see it working. Better. That's yeah. better, yeah. So your handle is slightly lower than horizontal, yeah? Yeah, it's slightly lower. Yeah, you just, move the just, handle up and just, down. Yeah. So your yeah. handle comes up and down to engage the cut. Yeah, okay. And also to micro-adjust for the perfect cut. Yeah. yeah. So if I, I just stick it on the bottom and just rub it on the bottom, it's, it's rubbing on the bevel, if you like. Yeah. Lift the hand up a little bit, pick up a cut, and just move my right hand across towards the middle of the bed and then just slide it on back up the side of the wall. There's a question there for you, Pete. How do you sharpen the ring tool? Uh, I use a diamond file, but um, <laughs> sharpening stone, they're cheap tools to buy, but they don't actually last that long. There isn't much to sharpen. But you don't sharpen them that often because, because of the way they work. They stay pretty sharp all the time. So, you balance one against the other. And the other thing is, um, I don't use it that often, so you know, I'll, I'll probably be sharpening once or twice a year. Well, yes, you can use it for both wet wood and dry wood. It's easier yeah. with wet wood, but they are predominantly only really for end grain turning. Yeah, end grain well, only. I, I've, yeah, it's actually not true that. Um, I've watched a couple of videos recently of people using them on cross grain as well. Yeah. 
Rex so it does, it does work. Who, who makes the got, ring tool. There's quite a few say, manufacturers. Mm. Um, I've got to say that it's uh, it's certainly designed, it was primarily designed for Engrain Holloway. Couple of good makers, uh, Crown. This is a Crown. Uh, Sorby. Sorby, no. Sorby make a couple. Um, I think got, um, Sorry, maybe Taylor the, do one as well, I think. Yeah, and the, the Hope one is uh, I think actually I've got one as well. Interchangeable. So they're quite, quite well, well manufactured, but it's not something you see in the shops that often because people look at them and think, gosh, that's scary. Mm. Yeah. And I can imagine well, the thing is, when you're using carbide, the, the, the carbide gets rid of the wood, as I always use carbide for hollowing normally. And the thing is that it's very difficult to get a really good non-tool mark finish just for yeah. the carbide. You've got to go in. You've got to go in with a, a scraper to get the perfect finish, yeah. <laughs> or as perfect as I can get. I'll maybe, I'll maybe drill this. It's not really going fun. to be appropriate on this, but if you look at that tool, it's got a, a second bevel on it going yeah. towards the other end of the ring. That's for going across the bottom of, of a piece. All right. So you reposition yeah. yourself. It's literally. A, it's a whole step change of position. Right. Um, and you work on the other bevel and you can go across the bottom. Excellent. Yeah, there's a bevel on the, on the other end, this end. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you said you can cut with the other side? Yep. yep. All right, okay, okay. Yep. So there's an, edge, there's an edge on either side of the ring, basically. There's an edge on either side and a completely okay. different there angle is. bevel. Oh, I should be making a phone call to Mr. Hope this afternoon. Are you talking about the termite, Mike? Yes, that's it, yeah. Uh, that's a one way, yeah. yeah. That, that, that was probably the original, well, it's not an original, but the, main, the first manufacturer who brought it out. Michael McEwen's joined us. Hi, Michael. Rub Dub Wood said, is Brian using the half inch version? Yes, that is the half inch. Yes, indeed, that is a half inch version. Did somebody John, say a question? He says, "Question." As a novice, I've accepted A. A what? <laughs> if you've accepted A, all you've got to do is B, C, D. Question <laughs> <laughs> yeah. for you, Mike. Don't do many goblets, but was hollowing one close top this morning. I struggled with the translation ah, of the bottom. Any advice? I used a Simon Hope uh, spindle gauge. No, used a spindle gauge and a Simon Hope six mil. Six mil. Assuming uh, means he's using a, a tulip type shape. Yeah, he's transition between the side um, and the bottom, is it? If I get a problem there, I I tend to cheat and use a negative rake scraper. Yeah. To to get the finish right. I was going to say um, scraper would probably be a good idea. Yeah. You can, as you feel confident enough, you can, you can do a shear cut with the left wing of your, be better, of your spindle gauge. But be wary, that is catch prone, especially the tight space. Right. Yeah. I did that because of, uh, uh, because of the depth of the cup. It's quite deep. So I had to use my spindle gauge just to open up the bottom so I can get the ring to end now just to put a finishing cut up the side of it. To try and make the size nice and even. John Knight said, let's try again. I have a large amount of holly cut into blanks. It's gone green. Will that turn out or is it to be coloured? Press the send button early. The green should turn out. Yeah, the green is normally just mould on the outside. Mm. I find with holly, if you get it hot, it goes yellow. So the same as you will split if you get it hot. Holly goes yellow when it gets hot. So sharp tools and don't cut too much at one go. I think I'm going to be happy with that. From Spain, Hill O'Brien. Tell you what, Brian, I'm impressed with you using that, buddy. Yeah, First time you've good. used it. Hand on a lot. Five hours. Yeah. That's excellent. No, it's good Only to be five hours. <laughs> <laughs> been practicing. Only bought it on Monday, and that's the first time I've used it. 
That's excellent. Very, Very impressed. Well. They are. Once you get the sweet spot, beautiful use. Yeah. Once you get the the, the shavings coming out through the ring, just easy peasy, basically. Rob was put in there. The first manufacturer of the ring that saw we copied was Vin Smith. Now does he? Right. There you go. He's in the early right. 80s from Tasmania. Right. So it was, uh, hey, it? it was a down under production. Did somebody say the termite was uh, a, a one way tool? Yeah, well, it's a one way tool, yeah. Right. There's... Now, Ben, I can confirm that is actually the first time he's used it. But he did sit in a workshop hangout with me for three hours and watched me experiment and with the ring tool. Talk. For the first and time. Turned, and he turned a very thin end grain bowl, which if he wants to grab it there, if he's in his workshop, we'll let you see yeah. it. Two millimetre. Amazing. If you grab it there, no, I'll put you on those three marks. You used mine just before you had my skew. No, no, that, no that's, that's, uh, this is the first time I've used this one. Yeah. I did try yours for about 15 minutes, if you remember. Yeah, there you before you my skew into the ring. That's all the, all the inside. All the inside was done with the ring tool. I did show us just, the torch through it last time. You can just see the red glow of the light through. Yeah. Yeah. No torch there, no. And, and you uh, I don't know where it is. I haven't got the torch here to hand. Oh, Mark. Oh, Mark. And there is a little plug in the bottom where I took it off, pulled the nub out because it's so thin, it just pulled the fibers straight out. Drainage. Mm. drainage. That's no, good though. There you go. So, bye to me. <laughs> so, we'll just give us a quick sand up. That is one of the problems with end grain bowls is that the the fibres are aligned to fall out of the bowl. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> I'm just rounding over the lip because they don't like a square edge on the lip. John Scarborough has joined. Hi, John. Hello, John. Hello, buddy. Uh, I know you might be horrified. I've got my finger in the cup of this, but it's actually about two and a half inches wide, so it's not that big a deal, guys. Got other fingers. Fifty people watching, Brian. Well, thank you very much, guys. I appreciate that. Uh, and I'm just going to do the outside quickly with my Simon Hope inertial sander. Woodworm Paul says he's ordered an oil-fired radiator for his workshop. And an under sink cabinet turned up instead. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get him a witch, did you, many chance? Amazon's That's Black Friday, you don't know what you're going to get. <laughs> but is you it heated? your money and you take your chances, is that what it is? Is the cupboard heated? That's what we're asking. So I have to say that the little heater I invested in from uh, China, <laughs> surprise. A little van heater or caravan heater or boat heater or whatever it is, a little diesel burner. It's churning away in the background there. It uses very little diesel. The temperature in my workshop currently is 18.3 degrees and it's 12 degrees outside. It works an absolute treat. 320 jumps, so that was 120, jumps straight to 240. Use that little bit of 240 for the inside as well. I'm not going to be drinking out of this, so we're going to use Yorkshire grit. And not that it matters about Yorkshire grit, because we'll put a finish on it anyway. So we'll use some Yorkshire grit just to, once we've sanding sealed it, of course. Nearly made that mistake again, Mark. <coughs> Write it on the table. Oh, there you go. See. <laughs> oh, Mike, Mike, Mike. Oh, you got it all. <laughs> it's got a proper label. Yeah, oh, but, but it's, it's not in red. Again. It's not in it's red. Not red, red yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in red, you're right. It's not red. It needs to be I, I, big, uh, big little yellow or something. I know why. Glenn reckons if you do happen to forget it, just do another application of Yorkshire Grit. Yeah, yeah do it twice, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great market employer. Yeah, just use a bit more Yorkshire grit, please. Yeah, 
Lawrence wants to know if it's more difficult to sharpen the ring tool. Um, I don't know because I haven't sharpened it yet. <laughs> I've only had it. I've only had it three days or four days. No, they're not difficult to sharpen, but there isn't much meat there to sharpen. It's not no. like a bowl gouge that you're going to work away four inches of flute. This is just the ring. So a light touch with a fine diamond file is all it ever needs. Yep. That's what the, the, uh, on some of the videos I've watched, there is a, you can buy a thing from one way, which is like a cone grinding. Yeah. A uh, thing that you put in a high speed grinder, probably a, something like a router or something. And you just touch it on it and take it off again. So, you don't actually try and grind it. You just kind of touch it on and take it straight back off. So, yeah, yeah. I'm just going to look up pictures of them. You can see that they, there really isn't much work to do. You just run around the inside edge yep. um, and touch it up. As well, I said, I you don't sharpen that often. I've heard it's important to remember not to touch the outside profile, though. Yeah, don't touch the outside. Yeah, yeah don't touch it, yep. Hmm. Tom Scarver said, is that the same heater as Steve has? Yes. Exactly the same thing. I took. I went on uh, Steve's recommendation, because he's been running his... He runs his 24 hours a day, and he has been for some time. <laughs> Woodward Paul says, my uh, sealer looks like neat mess. Well, it's not. It's actually a cellulose sealer made with cellulose thinners and shellac. On it's the a, colour of the cherry coming in. Yeah. So we're just so working the shots again. Go Sorry, now go ahead. John Knight is asking, Mike, is your ZM heater still working well? No. <clears throat> I've now got a draper. The ZM packed up on me after two years. Hmm. Um, so I went for a draper and I've had that last year and I took it out of dust storage two days ago and it's working perfectly. So uh, I don't think the ZM there's anything wrong with them, but... Uh, I can't recommend them now. I should actually put an addendum to the video I did, but um, I haven't got around to it yet. It just stopped working. What, what it was doing, it was coughing and spluttering, which meant there was something wrong internally. I checked what I could. Couldn't get it to work. So uh, it went down the tip. But if mm. I'd known about the one Brian's got, I think I would have gone for that one. But there you go. But this was so, okay. Cost, it cost, I paid just under 100 pounds for it. Yeah. We shipped all the way from China. It's unbelievable. Right? Yeah. And you have to get a power supply as well for it, don't you? You need a power supply, yeah. You need a 12-volt power supply, so you might even have a 12-volt power supply, you know? Oh, 12, you can't run it off the mains then? No, it's not off mains. It's off. It's a 12-volt system because it's, it's designed to be used in lorries and boats and stuff ah, right. to run off, yeah. a, run off the battery system on a car, you know? You can get a converter though, can't you? Um, yeah. I suppose you could, yeah. But the little of 12 volt power supply I bought cost 20 quid, guys. And you can run three different things off it. So if you wanted to put some oh, right. LED lights around your workshop as well, you know, 12 volt LED lamps, you can stick them up as well off it. I'll show you, you in a minute if you want. If you've got an old scrappy laptop knocking about, yep. have a look at the um, output on that because a lot of those are 12 volt as well. Yep. You're. Uh, what are their power supplies will be 12 volt. It takes quite a bit of water still to kick it up as the, as the issue. Uh, it's, that's what Steve told me. I know. Um, when, it, when it first starts, it, it draws a lot of power, so it draws a lot of watts because it's uh, the, the little heater plugs are heating up, just mm -hmm. like you would do it just like you're doing a diesel car. So the heater plugs heat up first. There we go. That's that done. Uh, Martin gives a little bit of a a little bit of Hampshire sheen in there, guys. Just Robo to, uh, says that they're all copies of Webasto. I don't know what that means, really. Webasto is a brand of diesel heater. It's a diesel heater brand, I think. Yeah. 
they're just uh, they they workshop here is the one that Mike has that great big rocket engine kind of thing. Mm, yeah, that's just that's exactly the same thing basically as what's in your domestic boilers here. Yeah, the, yeah. the only downside to those they're they're noisy. That, that's yeah, the oh, they thing. are yeah, but they certainly do heat up very quickly. Yep. Yeah, we were. Oh yeah, we had, uh, Clint was using his at York at Yorkshire Great HQ. Yeah. Yep. He's got a big old space there, and it was he turned he up in no time. Close, <laughs> that, but that's what they're designed for. They're kind of designed yeah. for garages and stuff where, exactly. you get, where, the, where the, the door's only, going to be open. And Yeah, the only thing to remember is, I mean, I got mine right by the roller door, and you've got to keep at least 12 inches gap between yep. the, you yeah. know, the bottom and also get a carbon monoxide um, detector. detector because, uh, you know, that's the only thing. That's what Rob was just explained there. Twelve to fifteen amps on startup. Yeah, you can. That's add, on, you can on add, my here. So. Right. Okay. But, but that's why I went for the power supply. <laughs> Your hand looks nasty, Brian. <laughs> it does. I suspect if you had no car battery knocking about, you could put a battery charger on it and run run it with that. You could indeed. Mm. Yeah. If, if you had uh, solar panels, you could do that too. Yeah. Because once it's running, it just uses the. Um, the, the very, very lim little. The only uh, thing it's running then is the pump. the pump. There's yeah. a tiny little pump which which clicks about once every second, and it just pumps the diesel through. It's like watching a a drip on a, a you know a medical drip. <laughs> it's the same sort of thing, a medical drip pump. There we go. That'll do. That looks all right. I think. So we'll go oh, with that for the really, for the goblet. Really nice. Really nice. Uh -huh. Thank Robbo's uh, installed Same. over 150 of them in motorhomes. Is it? He's an go. agent for Webmaster. He okay, he knows what he's talking about then, eh? Oh, just dropped the ball. Oh no, tragedy. Dropped the ball and it's got it's now got hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he obviously Brian. didn't hear Hoover those shavings up. I Brian, didn't Hoover quick, them, quest Jim. quick question, if I may, you know the collar <laughs> on your on your headstock. <laughs> the collar on my headstock. Yeah, well, you know, just one. just behind the chair. Yeah, have you moved it round? This? No. Yeah. No. All right. I'm like just that. wondering. No, I was just thinking because on mine, the where you where you put your stop uh, bar in. This thing, it's, yeah. It's at nine o'clock, which is ridiculous. So yeah. I, I think I just turn it round and have it on top. Good idea. Yeah. That's that's the best place. I, no, I didn't turn it, Mike. It just kind of came oh, like that. Okay. Goblet. So I'm just going to stick this in here just to give us a little bit of support. And I aim this right at his nose. There we go. And I'm not going to press too much on it. Just enough as kind of just keep it in there. Now, let's figure out what we're going to do now. Overhead. Change your camera. Go to the overhead. Oh, no, not overhead. Uh, and let's go with... Uh, now, what tool do I need now? Let's go with a spindle gauge. Screw. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. No. I've been tempted to go with a ball gauge. A ball gauge? Roughing gauge. Roughing gauge. A spindle gauge roughing gauge, you mean? Yeah, because you're taking away a lot of stock to begin with. Love that cut, huh? Well, I could do that too. What do I do with it? Where is it? Where have I had it? What's, what speed are you running at? Uh, that it was at a thousand. Oh, knock it off of it. Oh, yeah, you're going to get up to two thousand. I'm not going to like that now because I've changed this and I've just hit the bottom of that cup. Oh, that's operator error. That was absolutely operator. Error, see, just right there, look. He'll be all right. Robbo said, "Why don't you get daring and try turning it without the ball?" I could. I'm just going to have to take a little bit of that further back now. Don't be goaded into it, Brian. I'm not going to be. <laughs> I won't be. Yeah, I fell for that. I fell for that trick once before, Mike. More than once. Yeah. More than once. We keep getting you with it. With, yeah, with my, with my we, lovely earworms, you know, who kind of just... Have you drawn this goblet shape for Brian Mark? 
in your no i haven't i haven't oh, done a drawing oh. lately i could do a drawing actually you could oh, oh, well. well, look at it. fans of brian do go on now let's let's drawing. let's see said goblin oh, just give me a minute hurry up <laughs> quit, quit messing about I can't believe there's no questions for the experienced people that are in my uh, in as my earworms. I can't believe there's not more questions. Benjamin saying that whoever oh, told you that's a masterpiece thought Mark to draw. <laughs> Vincent Charlton's just joined us. Hello, well, wait, where is this masterpiece? Where do you see this? This is this, this, Vincent. This, this is guaranteed to be funny. Have you finished yet? Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That looks like what I'm going to turn out like that. <laughs> 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 oh, oh. Right, okay. I've got, the, I've got the picture now. Wait, you're just look at my drawing a minute. Oh, oh. you got one as well. Hold on. Oh, yeah, please, on. please start a drawing as well. This, this, this is... This, this, uh, do I have to vet this first? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's the car. Uh, Oh, here we this go. Oh, there's a face. Yay. Hey, well done. <laughs> nice one. Excellent. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. I know that's your copyright, but you know, you, no, you well, are mental. <laughs> I'll let you off, Pete, because you're afraid. You're a mate of mine. Sorry. Vincent Charlton's just joined. Hi, Vincent. This Pete turns up sadly. Yeah. Vincent Vince just turned up and he thought, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> It's the it's uh, Brian is now the Bob Ross of of, of Scotland. <laughs> Bob Ross. Happy accident. Have you never heard of Bob Ross? I'm free. No, no. You know. Come on. Brilliant painter. Yeah. Oh, he's a painter. That's a little mm. cloud. I will paint a little cloud over here. We have. Paint we don't have. Cloud. We don't make mistakes. We just have happy little accidents. Exactly. Yeah. And a happy little cloud. <laughs> In your, world. in your world you guys are all mental oh, he, was big, he was a big thing in the states wasn't he uh, he was very big yeah. <laughs> this is really really good because I've got on changing my collar on the lathe now and I don't know why I've never done it before mm -hmm. looks like I'm stupid possibly And your lathe might have been put together by an apprentice then. Like, yeah, could have been. Sounds like it. Chris, Chris from Bailey Woodworks is in. Oh, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. Oh, I know why, because you get shavings in there, wouldn't you? That's the point. Yeah, it looks all right. That'll be thin enough for the scent. Let's just bring that down a bit more. Now you take a rest away with a roughing gauge. I can. We're all, waiting for, we're all waiting for it now. Not sure I like that now. Yeah, I'll Don't do it. Right. Try and copy Mark and then try and do it your own. I'm not copying Mark. I think you'll have to oh, do an off-centre one if you've got a copy Mark's drawing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are you trying to say? <laughs> nothing, Mark. Absolutely nothing, Mark. You know me. <laughs> Let's just get rid of some timber here. Cody Shed says it's a captive ring, Brian. Zero oh, chance. Oh, no captive rings. They're illegal. 
She actually said captive ring brain. But uh, brain, yeah. yeah. No, I'm just going to leave a little bit in the middle there. But it won't be a captive ring. Put it off fender, Brian. Do a little off fender one. Yeah, that right, Mike. Still happen, Mike. If, if this goblet time. goes off center, it's uh, it's broken. <laughs> I know all about that. <laughs> I was going to say it's going to be a Mike Walt goblet. <laughs> Uh, really, oh, yeah. that really upsetting. Really upsetting. No, no you don't. You know, <laughs> you have a repetition. Coventry goblet. <laughs> yeah. A Coventry goblet, is that it? Yep, that's what it's called. How many tenants did you end up cutting that day? Oh, I was, I was going to say earlier on when Brian said, <laughs> uh, when Terry said about the tenant. Yeah, uh, three. I don't like this. There's a dark mark just appeared in the middle of that. That's fine. There's a little bit of uh, <laughs> what looks almost like borrowed there. It's just been a little branch inclusion or something at one time. That'd be grand. That'd be grand. Um, Let me just make this a little bit thinner here. So is it the, the, the base is yeah. narrower than the top. Right, right that's it. What are you going to say, Pete? I can say I'll, I'll be marking my base and uh, putting a small parting line behind it hmm. about this stage. Just keep your perspective right. Right there somewhere. Let's just get rid of that. Martin Askew says the floor needs cleaning. He's let himself go, hasn't he? Yes. Let himself down. Let his friends down. Well, yeah, <laughs> shavings on the floor before he started, so. Yeah. I know, shocking. Yeah. Absolutely shocking. And he left shavings on my floor and walked out of the workshop. That's because it was your workshop. He got his tennis ball full of shavings as well, just now. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah, that's the thing that really annoyed me, actually, bro. Uh, Terry. Mm. Well, they gave the tennis ball some hair. Yeah, he yeah. has to keep the tennis ball clean. <laughs> No tennis balls were hurt in this video. video. Except one got a punctured nose nearly. <laughs> Benjamin just come up with a unique design. A double ended goblet. Done it. <laughs> Been there, got the t shirt. Yeah, bit of a devil hollow. Bit of a devil hollow in it out there, wasn't it? Yeah, quite difficult to drink out of as well. Hmm. About as pointless as a captive ring. Are you doing a captive ring, Brian? Nope. Oh, it looks like you were. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks for that, mate. I love you, mate. <laughs> well, I'm just leaving a little bit on here because I, like, uh, I like to have a little... Knuckle. Finger grip. Finger grip. So that's a little finger grip up here. If I could ever get the cut to be right, it would be better, wouldn't it? Let's try it left hand. Yeah, about another quarter inch deeper, it'd be right, right. Rob is shouting at me now because I'm cutting that pole slightly there. I get told off for that. Yep, yeah, and you deserve it. Gee, thanks, Pete. I'll do. Sorry, get away with that. Ah, gentlemen, uh, yeah. explain the logic of a double ended goblet. You use it in space, much easier to drink out of. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's making sense now. I think I need to see Mark's picture again because I'm not convinced of You're not far off it. Yeah, it's about right. Following it again. Once you snap it in half, it'd be perfect. <laughs> if I snap this in half now, Terry. That's a love this you operator ever then. Mm. 
looking You'd good. You'd be doing this for the skew now, wouldn't you, Terry? I would be, yeah. Done it all with the skew, really. Got the hollow in as well. well I, would have done it, I would have done it all with the skew, really. Well, you never know if they use it as a screen. Well, excuse me. I don't really care. I am doing it the way I'm doing it. <laughs> You ought to try God, it. You sound proper. You sound almost proper Belfast then. Yeah, you notice that little Irish accent drops in there and again. No twang, it just pops in. Yeah. I've got too thin. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I keep Mike's quiet. sitting on the edge of his seat. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, little fit. So I tell you something, when you're actually, what, I haven't seen many goblets, you know, uh, turned really, actually turned on video. And when I'm, when I'm watching, probably I'm holding my breath. Yeah. <laughs> when you do it yourself, it, 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 you know, hey, you know how the rest of us feel, Paul. <laughs> That's what we're doing yeah. when we're watching you, Mike. <laughs> now you know why we're all blue in the face at the end of you. <laughs> I do like the, 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 I presume, I assume, you're going to do a sort of a concave stem or you're going to do a thin stem? No, I'm just going to leave it concave in this way. Yeah. So that's that's going to be the bottom of my base and then I'm going to cut off behind that. So right. We're just so going like to keep co yeah. coming in here. It's nearly too big a cut. Mm. Just taking that a little bit lighter. I'm trying to get it somewhere close to what Mark showed us. <coughs> Robbo said he was thinking that if the gouge was ground in a thumbnail shape, it would cut much better. A thumbnail? See that man there? I can't dust my head in. <laughs> you mean like Got this one, one Robbo? <laughs> yeah. That was blunt. That one will not do. Let's uh, yeah, well. <sighs> let's see what else we've got. One ground the right shape, let's, but it let's doesn't try a better. sharp one. Let's try a nice sharp one. I've got a nice sharp one. That's the problem. Well, what I could do is I could sharpen it. Let's, uh, let's stop that thing. Robert wants to know, is there a rule of thumb regarding the base and the stem size of the goblet? Oh yeah. Thirds. <laughs> thirds. Rule of thirds. Thirds is the answer. Mm, not let's necessarily. See. I was going to yeah, say, well, it doesn't always have to be that. If it's a very no. long stem goblet, then no. But anything up to, if everything is in oh. proportion, and this is only my opinion, of course. I do what's happening there. Approximately third. That's because you're taking advice from the Australian market. Oh, hang on, we've got 10 minutes of the Pro Edge now. <laughs> no, 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 Mike, sorry. That's not oh, going to happen. Just grind four inches off. Yeah. Talk as long as here. Hello, Douglas. I'm going seeking, I'm going oh, seeking the sharpness. It's kind of short, but I'll try and sharpen that. See, there's, there's um, quite a good style, guys, to cutting a goblet. If you go into. Um, your wine cabinet, wherever you keep your glasses. Yep. And have a look. Um, they've been doing it for a couple of years now, apparently, making these glasses things. Barry's and they've got in. the shape's pretty much set. I pass. I pass. <gasps> Brian, is that yes. a diamond belt? It is. That's my new diamond belt. They're great, don't they, Brian? I would say so, but this this gouge is seriously out of shape, guys. <laughs> so we'll just give it a little bit to try and get it back to something. Newcastle said, is it required to take long cuts from the base to the stem? Um, sort mm. of. My preferred way is I tend to take a take the stock away at 45 degrees to the stem that I want to make. And if I'm doing a thin stem, I'll be doing about an inch at a time. Um, if I'm doing a standard stem, then it's a bit more ambitious than that. But, yeah, you're going from 
Okay, go you from the and... base to oh, the to have a look the at that. As a general rule. If you want to try and you take the longest the cut you can, so you get less pull marks, the interruption yeah. lines. All I would say is to that, if you're doing a thin stem goblet, um, my preference, only me personally, once you get to a stage where you can safely get your gouge in, work towards the headstock because then if you haven't, you know, then you've got more support from the headstock yeah. end. But um, I watched um, Jimmy Clues do an 18 inch goblet without any support at all. And he hollowed out the cup with a, uh, with a push cut, no pull cuts at all. But uh, you know, yeah. He has got excellent tool control and presentation, yeah, sure. obviously. I always say, if you can put Real. support from the tailstock, do it with whatever you're turning. Rules are made to be broken, aren't they? Well, yep. for the first many years of turning thin stem goblets, before I realised just how silly they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hadn't seen anything from Mike or anybody else. I was just using a cone of wood that I used to support the, uh, the goblet. Yeah. <laughs> and I saw my little tennis head. ball and thought, blimey, why not? So I went and stole one, one of the kids. The only thing with the tennis ball, um, I, I tend to prefer on the longer stuff now a cone because you can you don't necessarily get the tennis ball centred. So yeah. if it's a thin stem, it can actually throw it off centre. But if you put a cone in... If you just turn a cone and put that in, that will actually centre it as well at that end. But, I mean, at the end of the day, Robbo's right. You should be able to do it without... Got um, shavings in my cut. That's not good, sure, isn't it? Without any support at all, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, support really is only needed for thin-stemmed. Yeah. Um, but, as Mike says, you've got it there, why not use it? Exactly. It's only kudos, isn't it, really? Yep. So many, so many brownie points for yourself if you can do it. Yeah. Nobody else Nobody else And at the end of the day, once you take the goblet off the lathe and set it on the shelf, nobody knows how it was made anyway. Uh, exactly. That's the, that's the uh, goal of any turning, isn't it? Yeah. Even confused. Yep. Uh, and if you're not a turner, no one's really interested. No, that's, that's true. It. You see the well, finished not really, are they? No. So that's a very simple shape there, guys. Douglas yeah, Mungham said, Brian, diamond belt, twelve ninety nine. Yep. Twelve ninety nine is right. Exactly. So as far as Michelle knows, it's twelve ninety nine. I got permission yeah, to buy the, the diamond belt. The direction of cut on stem really depends on what shape the stem's going to be. Hmm. Um and the stem shape is up to your imagination, really. So you yep. can get a lot of influence on good design by looking in your glasses cab cabinet because they've probably all done it before. Mark's talking, um, sir. Hi, Mark. Hi, Hi Mark. Mark. Welcome along, buddy. Hi, Mark. Can I make a suggestion, Brian? And please yes, don't man. think I'm trying. I'm not being arrogant. No, no, go ahead. <laughs> at the base of the cup. Yeah, at the base of the cup. Got yeah, go go to your right a little bit. You've got that edge. Just round that edge over a bit. Okay. That, yeah. That's just... Mm -hmm. I just round it over the sandpaper a bit, maybe. I can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Christ, fine. Yeah, don't risk putting a skew on it. Yeah, it was like a bit of a, a, bit of a sharp edge there. Yeah, a bit of a... Yeah. A bit of a bit shoulder. Of a, yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't being picky. No, it's fine, Mike. No, that's great advice, mate. Thank you. Appreciate that. Lawyer, <laughs> how's that look now? That's better. That's it. Smoothed it off nicely. Right. Nice shape that is. Like good. That. that is. Uh, I can't even read what great sandpaper that was. But I we'll don't know what you reckon, it. Terry. I, I think the base looks a bit clumpy. Oh no, he's got to cut it off. Yeah, right. it does a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't, like, don't like the detail there. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. Doug Miller at Woods Fun Round said, if you turn a thin stem, you need to pull the cup rather than push it. That's correct. I've yeah. heard that. I've yeah. never done it. I've got one in my house, which is a tulip-shaped cup with an 18-inch 
uh, stem, which is three millimeters all the way down um, onto a base. And I did that with a cone, in fact. Yeah. Um, because I hadn't learned about pulling by that time and, and no. I didn't know you couldn't do it. It does it's work, just... the pulling, especially yeah. if you use. Um, uh, I don't know, everybody's going to laugh now. I, I use, <laughs> yeah, I use, uh, yeah, I do. I use masking tape. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. I just pull it only ever so slightly. Use, use 25 feet of it. <laughs> no, yeah. 25 rolls. 25 <laughs> rolls, yeah. yeah. The, issue, the issue is, he's not allowed to tell you what kind of tape it was. <laughs> no, because they've asked him, does he just use it? Yeah, because the, 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 restrain, a... the restraining order is still in place. Yeah, the cease and yeah. desist order is still in place. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. that's bad. The, only, <laughs> the first time I used that pull method, it was on a just privately a, a long stem, thin, a long thin stem goblet. But guess what happened? As I took the tape off, I snapped the snapped the stem. <laughs> <Goblet>. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, yeah. About it. I, I did really quite a lot when I thought they were right. clever, and then I just looked at them and thought, "Thanks, mate." They're really rather silly. So I stopped doing them. I had a shape in my mind when I came in today. Then Mark did a, a lovely drawing, absolutely yeah, well, fabulous drawing. So I thought I'll try. I nearly copied it. I Not nearly copied it. <laughs> Just got to steam it a bit. One more suggestion, now, Brian. One yep. more suggestion, and I'll shut uh -huh. up. You know that you know that knuckle, that finger hole there. Yes. Yeah. If you get a skew, or we'll go in for it from either side. You can have a captive ring there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> I, See that, that. I, I got a suggestion which isn't totally silly. I could use one of these though, because I could easily do it with one of these. I could easily make a little yeah, captive yeah. ring yeah. with yeah. a captive ring tool, but I'm not going to. Yeah. <laughs> if you uh, just take your parting tool yeah, and yes, where you're going to part it off anyway, take that in about another um, quarter of an inch or so, so you've got half an inch of space there you can sand and finish that before you part it off yeah all oh, right okay i'll just taper the back bit yeah, so take it down by the fingers stuck on it. Take yeah away. just taper the back down to it so that you don't get your fingers in there but um that gets sure. the bit that's actually going to sit on the table well, finished at the same time as the main goblet yeah so if i take a bit off here then i'll be a ton of speed on a bit take some more off of here like you're saying yeah, yeah you just do the first quarter inch of parting off. We've got plenty of meat to drive it with. Oh, there's loads, loads left. Yeah. Now you can sand and finish that bit up. of base, which I find is, um, it works better that way. Just take that at an angle. I will not do too much of that because I want to keep that wee bit. I'm going to use that little bit for something else later. Typical joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Miserable, is that what you're trying to say? No, I, I thought my lathe was squeaking, but it was you walking. It's all right. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're so funny today. <laughs> mm. Perfect. It's good. Let's finish that. Let's roll that edge over nicely so it's not horrible looking. Tiny little bit of sanding sealer. I think it's a bit late not to make it horrible looking, Brian. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Damage is done, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. No, I really like I that. I, re I yeah. like, like the like the cup as well. It's really nice. Yeah, thanks, mate. I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's have some more uh, Yorkshire grit. Is Glenn still in? I don't suppose he has. I think Glenn's making grit today. Yes, he says he's watching while he's working. That's not a contradiction in terms. Watching where you were. Just gonna say, but I didn't. You beat me to it, Brian. <laughs> Rob has got it. He always, says it's a goblet. Always put the, the uh, product saver back on. Rob says it's. Douglas Mungham, that is uh, yeah. American cherry Brian's using. It is. And Robbo said, 
gobble up with a Christmas tree base? Question mark. Lol. Yeah. <laughs> Michelle Higgins has just joined us. Hi, Michelle. Hi, yeah. Hi, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. I may have used the tell too much. Don't regret. <laughs> <laughs> Just a tad. Yeah, Just a tad. I'm glad I moved my TV screen because I've just yeah, fired it all up there. Make it nice and smooth. Nothing else. I will. You see, look, Brian has completed a goblet and will have parted it off, let's say, in an hour and a quarter, start to finish. And there's a lesson to be learned there. My life could be a lot. My life could be Walt. a lot quieter if I didn't stop and answer questions every two seconds. Yeah, I know. Nobody's mm. asking me questions because I don't know what I'm doing, Mike. No. <laughs> Clint said he can still hear you. That's all right. That's okay, Clint. I can't He's believe probably... there's no singing. Why is none of you guys singing? Because Joe's Clint's probably here. opened his garage door and turned on the blast oh, burner Mark. so that he can hear Joe. Copyright, Brian. Copy Copy it. Right. Oh, we're not allowed yeah. to. Okay. No, YouTube will ban you. Can't do that. <laughs> Got copyright infringing either. Mm. What do you mean I can't sing? Not you. How dare, how dare you? How dare Have you? Have yourself a touch your face with light brown, Yorkshire gritty. There you go. That's the, oh. that's the abbreviated version. <laughs> I make it nice and shiny. I'll just do the outside of the goblet too. Give it a quick run and we'll do polish the whole thing again. Clean piece of cloth now. Oh, that's two bits. Nearly used two bits there, guys. That would have been a tragedy. <laughs> Turn the speed Paul up. Finley's in. Hi, like Paul. Paul. Welcome along, buddy. Afternoon, Paul. Paul's a, a fellow Northern Ireland turner. Hey, Paul. Produces some nice stuff. Has a YouTube channel as well. Hop along, have a look. Give him a bit of support. Give him the odd day. Uh, I did that. I can't remember if it was last week or the week before I last looked at it. Give, give him a sub if you haven't yeah. already subbed. It's a great way to support the community. It's actually starting to get quite a nice shine on it already. Uh, let's use some... Uh, I'm sure she's high gloss. Hey. The way I use this, I don't know if that's right or not, but I use it uh, quite liberally. Not too much, though. Less is more, uh, apparently, according to less, Martin. Less is more, yeah. But I use it until it starts to get tacky. Just keep rubbing it with a cloth until it starts to grab the cloth. Or the tissue, in this case. There you go, that's just starting to grab the cloth up there. We're back down here again. Ready to buff then. And uh, it's once it grabs the cloth, it's kind of ready to buff. Do the bottom. There you go. That is a, an advantage of uh, that particular wax. Yep. It does go on quite quickly, it doesn't need much flash off time. Spin the lathe up. Light pressure. Basically just holding the paper against the wood is all you're doing. And it shoots off the shine. Then a little vibration happening up here. Ball might be a bit loose, might not he? he didn't tighten it up much. Yeah. Could be, Terry. But it's just a tiny little bit. It's not nothing to worry about. I don't think it's going to fall off the lathe anytime soon. <clears throat> I hope not, anyway. Paul Finley, Paul Finley said, I'm, what Brian, what do? daft numpty thing did you do to your hand? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, Paul. This was a burn. Goes by I a map, it's a map gas uh, blowtorch. Cool. I stupidly put my hand in front of the flame. I really couldn't see the flame because I was outside and it was sunny, but 
should have known it was there, but I didn't, and I burnt my hand. I bet you knew it was there when it burnt you, though. Yeah. <laughs> and as you'll fight, Mike, it was that bloody quick. I, I didn't really feel it. Really? Um, and I didn't feel it for about an hour afterwards, and I thought, bloody hell, that's sore. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. Well, worse Andy than that, Mike. Andy. 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 Right. Andy. Afternoon. That'll be enough of the old buffing. I really like that. Parting tool. So we'll release it from the headstock. Take yeah, out the old smiley face ball. Have a smile. Yeah, don't don't do Mark's trick by keeping it up and catching the bowl and yeah, trying trying to yeah. trying to cut it off. <laughs> so I'll use my th I'll use my thin parting tool now. This little record power. Make one mistake, people oh, never yeah. forget. I yeah. have the same problem with sheep worrying, Mark. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Oh, that rumour is true then. No, oh, no, no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> just he oh, made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I'm just undercutting this a little bit so that it kind of sits on the rim rather than on the... I maybe undercut it a little bit too much there, but I don't know. It'll be all right. And just make little relief cuts as you go in. And I've been very careful that I'm, I'm looped around the... the uh, the chuck, so I'm not going to get any danger of getting caught up in it. Unlike the you could have parted off left-handed, I suppose. Now we've got, I could have, but I don't like to. No, I'll I don't know that. I can't do it. Can't get me yeah, left-handed to work. I just can't. I don't like it either, so I kind of don't do it. Uh, what am I going to do now? Oh, yeah. Take this out. Save it. Save that because there's a purpose for that later, which I haven't quite currently got yet. Circular by Keith said hi, guys. Been listening all the time. Nice job, Brian. Thank you, Keith. So I'll just grab that, tighten that up before anybody gets the, the uh, chuck police out. That uh, that chuck has a flat piece on for the jaws to grip on. Um, what am I looking for? Oh yeah, this little thing. My phone just made a funny noise in my pocket. It's called rigging, Brian. Rigging? <laughs> oh, so, oh, so I think it was actually a message, so it made a funny noise, not, rather than a ring. Because it rings like an old-fashioned phone, like I think a whole lot of people's do. Get rid of that tailstock out of my way before I bang into it again and hurt my hand again. That can go. Bring the goblet back. Turn that on. And we'll just get rid of that little nub in the bottom. I'll tell you what. That's what, really running. That's really running through, isn't it? Well, this here. <laughs> it's, it's like a, a model goblet. goblet. <laughs> oh, that's 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 a goblet. Yeah. Time to change your chuck. I'm That's starting to think that, actually. It's a bit... Operator error -ish. Yeah, it's time to adopt my idea. Yes. And you, yeah, that's why I kept that piece, Mike. Uh, Pete, Pete, sorry. Uh -huh. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I've got loads of more of the workshop because I just can make another one whenever I have that suitable bit, bit cut off. Yeah. Right, we'll finish that later. Because I'm quite conscious of the time now. It's okay. It's like about one of my lives, Brian, at this time now. I've just finished roughing down. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> and, just, and of course, just, the just hours. Around, chat, Mike. <laughs> Sorry, Terry. We'll pop and of course, the hour, the hour chat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why is that not getting in? <laughs> I always take that out and finish taking it off by hand, turning the hand wheel, because uh, I don't want to leave that thing in. There we go. Um, little board. Where is my board? There it is. We're not bored. Pop that up there. 
That's lovely. Change Very cameras nice. to there. Very nice. Down a bit. I'll just drop that down a little bit for you. That's very nice. I like That's that. Elegant, Brian. Hey, guys. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Tall, elegant. Uh, little <laughs> goblet. Just, just like Mark's yeah, drawing. That's wonderful, Brian. Just, just almost like Mark's it's, drawing. Almost. Yeah. No, that looks good. Really good. It's slightly, so, slightly straighter than Mark's drawing, but you know. Yeah. yeah well. There's everything not straighter than Mark's drawing. Right, I'll bring you guys back in here. Um, <clears throat> go over there. Get the mouse. Uh, everybody decent yet? There we go. Hey, hey. There we go, guys. Thank you very much for ear running for me. Well, uh, cool, Mark, pleasure. Pete, Terry, and especially Mike. Thanks very much, Mike, for coming in to kind of support me a little bit. And Absolutely I know you're just, pleasure. I know you're just bored, mate. <laughs> yeah, well, you're not, you're not wrong there, Brian. <laughs> it was either you or what that door I painted this morning dry. And I thought, oh, I know. Boy. Well, you might as well watch me then, because that's just about as exciting. <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Good, excellent. Well done, boys. Thank you very much. Yeah, that drill is not seated properly. You're right, Rob, it wasn't. You're all right. But it's fine. It wasn't going very fast. Right. We're done, guys. Thank you very much for coming out to watch. Um, I'll see you on Monday evening again. Yep. That's, that's when I'm going to yep. put myself back on this camera. Good, folks. Tomorrow night, it's the uh, Battle, Battle of, of the, the makers. makers. That's great. Okay. It's all square. Okay. All square. All square. Be, last one of the year. I won't be able to. Oh, be able to take one, one more thing before we go. One, because, uh, one more thing before we go. You remember, guys, that we had uh, after a, after a couple of presents of late. We had uh, we had this little present. This was our uh, depth gauge from, <laughs> which is brilliant. But then eventually got look. I eventually got this one. From Mark the General mm. Woodcomer. So I had to modify it slightly because he drilled the hole in the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for telling everyone. Yeah, he kind of had it going this way, then. which is not right. So I had to drill a new hole. So there we go. And a, a, a little addition of a locking screw. So it now works. Lock that up. And there we go. Depth gauge. Brilliant. So thank you, Mark. For that. It's quite right, mate. No excuses for Thunder, isn't it? Appreciate it. No excuses for that one. one. So that no. hangs up there. I'm still and, waiting uh, mine, thank you. I love this one that yeah, Ben gave me because it's got yeah. so many accessories. It's really, really helpful. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. There we go. That's us. We're done, boys. I'm too busy right. making these things to be making more depth gauges. Uh, well, this is true. This is true. Uh, is it true? Too, I know there's a waiting he's, list. He's kind of, kind of too busy earning money, money, guys. So, That's yeah. what it is. <laughs> he's earning some money at last, he says. Yay. Yeah. Anybody, any final comments that we want to make? Or? Quite a few nope. saying it's nice. So we'll later we'll Good. Like it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate everybody coming in to watch. So that's us. We're done. It's a uh, good afternoon from all these gentlemen. Bye, everybody. And it's good afternoon. Cheers, everyone. For me. See you later, guys. Cheers.